Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and as you can see, the beard may be missing, but don't worry, it will return shortly. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about today is this right here, the rough stock. Now, this is basically a console-friendly, well, it's not even just console-friendly, it's on both console and PC, and essentially, it is a Bronco-based mud truck slash, I guess you could call it sort of a mud truck, sort of a mega truck. It draws inspiration from both sides of that, and it is ready to basically bomb through just about whatever obstacle you put in its way. Now, this vehicle is by MaxMike181, so we already know that it's going to be quality, we already know it's going to be fun to drive, so let's go ahead and fire it up, take it into the garage, see what it's all about in terms of customization, and then we'll get it out for a drive, and really see what this thing can be put through. Come on! Oh, it doesn't have a high range with the base gearbox, that's a little bit different. Now, first, we're going to get started with the engines. Now, engine-wise, we start off with a 302, then we can go up to a 351, which takes us, wow, already to an S-plus power-to-weight rating. That was quick. Then we have a 400, which is also S-plus again, but a little bit better durability. And then, finally, we have a 460 big block, which is, once again, still an S-plus, but also a little bit better on the durability front. Now, it says a complete overhaul of the original design, raw, unadulterated power, only rivaled by its own fuel consumption bring spare gas so basically passes everything but the gas station so we're gonna go ahead and throw that guy in there and gearbox wise we have the stock we have the crawler box gen 4 and we have the ix m181 slider cvt now we're gonna do the crawler box gen 4 the crawler box has gone through so many different variations and so many different refreshes that now for it to be on its fourth generation is pretty incredible to be honest now, suspension-wise, we've got a stock one, then we have crawler, which that's going to be where your flex is going to be found. If you want to take this thing on maybe some rock crawling trails, then you have raised, then you have tuned custom. Now, tuned custom looks about the same height in the front as the crawler, but in the back, it's a little bit higher. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go with the crawler first, and then using the dev tools once we're out of the garage, we will switch over to the tuned custom before we go into the mud, most likely. So we'll get that installed. Now, tires. This is where it gets really, really interesting. So we start off with the 46-inch MMR Shielder Scout Edition. Then we have some, probably some like coating, al uh, coating altered uh, default tires. Then we have the MMR Saber Scout Edition. Then we have these TTC tires, which are kind of like a little bit of a Super Swamper inspired look. Then we have these, the CTMS-1, the T01, and then the MMR Assassin Scout Edition. And, oh, dude, we've got Tega tires. If you really want to throw them on there, you totally could. Then we have the MMR Lancer Scout. So that's going to be your studded option if you want to take this thing on maybe some ice. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to run the TTC tires. Those look sick. Now, let's go with the Autonomous Scout Plus. And then spare wheel-wise, I think we're going to go with a pair of TTC tires in the back. And then, ah, we're not going to do the truck repair supplies. Now, rear bumper, I want to switch that out for probably, like... Probably something a little bit more, well, actually, I think the stock one is just about where it's at. Now, tube doors or the standard one, let's do tube doors. And you can actually apparently take the, oh, you can take the whole front clip off and expose the engine. That's sick. You can get a, like, actually a really good look at that massive supercharger as well. So for now, let's put the front clip back on. And then rooftop wise, we've got like a small roof rack with supplies, angled sun visor, flasher bar if you want to, I guess, be a patrol vehicle. I'm going to put the roof fog lights up there. And then front bumper. Now, let's see. Are these mostly default bumpers? Okay, they are. So I'm going to leave the uh, standard stinger on there. And then lightweight thresholds is basically like going to be uh, rock sliders slash steps. And TTC wheel, that's completely fine with me. And then when you adjust the color, it seems to adjust the color of, like, the chrome. Oh, that's actually kind of cool because with this, you could have, like, blue chrome on, like, a uh, like a gray background. I mean, I, I know some people might not be into that, but, like, I kind of think it looks pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and throw beans on the dash, and we'll get this thing outside, and we'll see what it's all about. It looks wild, that's for sure. So let's take it over to the flex ramp and see how it does over there. Now, I'm sure that it's going to have a lot of power with this particular engine setup. So I, I, don't, I don't think acceleration or speed or torque is going to be any kind of issue at all. But let's see if we can bring you up onto the ramp. Let me back you up. Oh, boy. 
Diff lock is always on. You just got to make sure the all wheel. Okay, there we go. That's pretty dang good. Honestly, like, especially when you compare it to other car, uh, I almost said other cars. It's not a car. Uh, other vehicles that are sort of built to that same, uh, Top Truck Challenge rule set. This is right there in line with what you're going to be seeing from the best of the other Top Truck Challenge rigs. So, I'm definitely excited to see what this thing could do once we take it into some actual rocks. Now, let's go ahead and get it out of the garage area. Easy does it. Bring it down to the end. Stop, stop, stop. Oh my god, stop. We'll get it backed up. And bring it back the other way. Dude, where are you? There we go. Okay. It's got so much torque. You really do have to get used to the amount of torque this thing pull, like puts out. Because it's a immense amount of torque. Whoa. All right. Holy crap. When you throw it in high, it freaking takes off. Now, the hill climb, I'm sure, is going to be no issue at all for it. But I'm really excited to see how it does in the rocks. Once we get up to the top. That was amazing. Like, the weight balance on the hill climb was obviously leaned a little bit to the back. Probably by those extra tires. But it really didn't cause any issues for us at all. It was still very well balanced. It's not feeling that. Probably because these rocks are slick. And they're designed to be slick because they're base game rocks. But, yeah, those rocks were definitely not designed to be climbed. I just wanted to see if it would ease its way up them. But it does seem like that's going to be the case. So let me make it a little bit further down. Oh, there you go. It could definitely use that torque to its advantage, though. The torque is really where this thing shines. Oh, jeez. That was not a good spot to let off the throttle. Letting off the throttle there was about, uh, about to be doomage for me. Yeah, look at the way it just walks right up that. And you guys have seen me take, at this point, quite a few different trucks through that particular, uh, that particular, like, testing circuit with that little rock climb. This, it didn't even care. It just went right the heck through it. Probably shouldn't have thrown it in high right where the suspension was going to compress, but I wanted to see how much it would actually compress. And it compressed a decent amount, but not, like, over the top to where it would, you know, where it would ruin the whole rig. So let's throw it in high and see how much mud it can get through in high without sinking. And I'll tell you something, in the shallow stuff, it has no problem at all. So let's go ahead and go to the first lane. Oh my god, wow! That was wild! It literally, like, pulled the entire front axle off the ground. And, like, once again, let me make sure I remind y'all that you can use this on console. It's freaking wild! Definitely add this to your list of crawlers that you need to throw on the back of a trailer, haul out to an off-road area, and just absolutely take for a rip. Because this thing, oh, y'all are going to love it. Whether y'all like to go mudding or, like, rock crawling or just general off-road truck stuff or top truck challenge stuff, you're going to be all about this thing. It's a blast. Although I seem to have gotten myself a bit stuck. Let me see if I can back up. That's that's going to be my biggest thing. Is if, I, if I can back up, I'll be okay. If I can't back up, uh, we're in a bit of trouble. Come on. Bro, you're like... You're like really stuck now, aren't you? Man, I drove this thing in here and now I've gotten it properly stuck. Let me go in all the way into low minus and see if it can move. Oh, it can move a tiny little bit? Like... If I really stuck with it, I'd be able to get it out of there. But I'm going to throw this guy right here. And I'm going to just, like, spin this around and throw a winch on it and pull it out. Come on. All right, thanks, Trail Stang. We appreciate it. Let's go. So really, the only time that this thing actually got stuck in the mud was when it was buried up to the bumpers. And you know what? I can't really be mad about it, like, at that point, because once it's buried up to the bumpers, there wouldn't really be much that you'd be able to do anyway, minus, like, you know, uh, like, reverse and then forwards and then reverse and then forwards again until you actually found grip, and then you'd be okay. But that would have probably taken quite a while to get out of there. Easy. Oh, I forgot to put the other suspension on, didn't I? Although I don't really think... I'm, I'm thinking about that now. I was like, would that little tiny extra bit of suspension rise in the rear have helped us in the mud? I really don't think so. And maybe it would have, maybe it wouldn't have. But again, I really don't think it would have helped us enough to where it would make a dramatic difference over the result that we had earlier. Let's make our way down. Come on. Not bad. Now, it's time to head to the bridge jump. 
Now, the bridge jump in this thing is going to be interesting, and I think it might actually take it pretty well because it's got that weight in the back to balance out the big old heavy big block in the front. So, with that in mind, I have a feeling it's going to land rear axle first. And if it lands rear axle first, we'll, we're in business. I mean, that actually means that if we land rear axle first, we might actually be able to take this thing to racetracks and have, like, a pretty decent amount of fun at a racetrack with it. Oh, wait. Whoa! I was about to say it handles really well, and then I was like... Then I hit terminal understeer. And then once you hit terminal understeer, all, uh, all bets are off at that point. Alright, repair and refuel. Let's go! Alright, Beans, you ready, bud? Very basic dash, but the point of this thing was not to be a luxurious interior. The point of this thing was literally, like, to, like, to get stuff done off-road. No luxuries included. Let's go! And switch. Almost there. Boom. Oh, yeah. It definitely leaned back. Okay. So, it leaned back onto the back axle. And, honestly, apart from spinning backwards on the landing, it did pretty freaking well. And I actually really like how this thing performed. It was really fun to drive. It wasn't ultra over the top. Like, it was still able to get stuck. But it, you still felt like you had a lot of power on your hands. Now, with that being said and done, hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you all next time. Talk to you all later.